welcome back to another reading vlog everyone i'm really hoping that this week is going to be a reading week i have like four books that i want to be reading this week we'll get into the tbr in a second but i have an exciting package that i want to unbox with you all it is from fairy loot and it was a pre-order from forever ago it is a result of one of my most toxic traits and that is buying special edition books of something i haven't even read yet <laughs> i was just completely influenced by the way these covers look and i convinced myself that i needed this even though i haven't even read these books I decided to get special edition copies of them. So here's hoping that I actually will enjoy these books once I get to them. But obviously, either way, they are stunning. Anyone have any guesses? Oh, wow, here they are. They are quite beautiful and chunky. It feels like so heavy. So yes, this is the Dark Artifices. Dark Artifice- Artifices. Why does that so, sound so weird? It doesn't even sound like an actual word. Literally so toxic because this doesn't even make any sense like why I own these now. I literally don't know why I bought these. <laughs> okay, so I I'm making my way through the Shadowhunters whole thing, right? And I'm not even a diehard fan. Like, I've literally only read the two first books in Mortal in the Mortal Instruments. I should not have purchased these. But I did. Forever ago. Future Sydney is very confused by past Sydney. I also look like a ghost. There. It's a little better. Okay, so yeah, I <laughs> decided to buy these. And I know nothing about them. And I don't even know what order they're supposed to be in. I know Queen of Shadows is last. Right? It's lo Lord, wait. Yeah, Lady Midnight, then Lord of Shadows, and then Queen of Shadows. Queen of Air and Darkness. <laughs> okay, see, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Like, literally, I don't deserve these. But I do because I bought them. You know, I paid lots of good hard-earned money on these. So I think they will still be really pretty on my shelves, obviously. And once I get to them, I don't know if I'll actually read these copies. I mean, why not? Wow, that character art. That is gorgeous. If you didn't know what these looked like, there's no inside the dust jacket art print though. That's, it's on the inside of the actual book, which is stunning. Yeah, I'm really excited to get to this series, but I have a long, long way to go still. That is one of my reading goals for 2022, to like make my way through the Shadowhunters. So I'm really far behind. I don't know if I will actually read like from these copies because I don't have normal copies of these books even. But it's almost like why not, right? I guess I guess I will. Let's look at the one of this the inside of this one. Wow. They're really pretty. This one's so thick. How many pages is this? It's almost 900 pages. I think they're signed too, right? They're supposed to be signed. Fairy Loot exclusive fifth anniversary edition. Yeah, there's it's a um, stamp signature. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys and explain to you how I do not deserve to have these books because I don't even know what they're about, so. <laughs> okay, so that's that. Now let's get into my reading plans for the week like i said there's like four books that i want to read because i don't know i feel like i'm getting back into the reading mood so i want to see if i can like crank out some good books so i'm reading white smoke now because of my last reading vlog i asked you guys to vote between this one and anxious people it was pretty much tied but i went with janelle's comment actually her comment was the tiebreaker and she voted for white smoke so i started this on Sunday. Actually, I don't know if I got to it on Sunday. I think I think I read a little bit Sunday and I read a little bit Monday yesterday, so I'm really not far into it. I'm on page 21, but I am going to hopefully finish this this week. And then I want to finish two other books. This is kind of ambitious, like very ambitious, but we're going to roll with it. I also want to do like another author taste test for this vlog too. So I want to read Bunny by Mona Awad as well as All's Well. So yeah, I want to read those two books by her and do a little bit of an author taste test because I've never read Mona Awad before, but I have All's Well on my iPad. So that would be really great if I could finish these two this week also. 
And then on top of all of that, I really want to crack open the Anthropocene reviewed by John Green. Not finish this this week. I think this is something I want to casually read throughout the month. You know, just like read maybe a chapter a night or, you know, however much. I feel like it's going to be very interesting and I'm going to really enjoy it and really love it. So I kind of just want to start it and see like how that goes and see how fast it takes me to finish. But yeah, that is the plan. So hopefully I'm finishing three books this week. I'm really excited about the books by Mona Awad. They're not even on my, my December TBR, if you haven't noticed. This is not on my December TBR, but it was something I was hoping I got to in November, but I was in pretty big reading slump like all of November, so didn't get to it. The other author's taste test video I did was for Riley Sager, which was in like September or October, so I really liked that idea and I would love to do that again. So yeah, that's the plan there. Also, I wanna point out the audio quality. I've been using my microphone here, my Blue Yeti, because I've actually had it since last Christmas, I got it from my grandma. I used it for like a couple of things and then I always just like had it like set aside and like put away. And then I re the reason I busted it out again was for my podcast episode on Talk Bookish to Me. And I was like, why am I not using this for my videos? Like the audio quality is amazing. It's just like not getting used. And I'm like, that needs to change. So I hope you enjoyed the audio quality. to update you guys on my reading. I finished White Smoke a couple hours ago now. I didn't give you updates like throughout or like, you know, when I got to the halfway point or whatever. We're just kind of speeding through it, honestly. I'm just gonna get this done and I'll update the vlog once I finish, but I feel like I have a lot of thoughts, not a lot of great thoughts. I have like judgmental thoughts kind of in terms of the book like I don't I didn't love it wasn't blown away by it and I feel like I only have bad things to say which sucks but overall it was okay I'll just start telling you my thoughts and I'll give you the official rating at the end but um biggest problems that I had with this are all like personal preference stuff so objectively this is not bad I typically don't love YA in the first place so I went into it trying to not have any high expectations or tried to not be like super excited about it because lots of people loved it and lots of people thought it was super thrilling and stuff so I tried to take that with like a grain of salt and not get my hopes up too high but even still after finishing it I was not overly impressed with this unfortunately. Several things that I've found that I hate in books Sorry if my eyebrows look crazy. Repetition of certain phrases and sound effects, especially when I'm listening to the audiobook of it. It just gets on my nerves with the amount of times certain things are repeated or when the narrator just like gets too loud or they just pronounce the sound effect in such an annoying way. <laughs> so I really hate that. And then I also hate when characters are given annoying pet names when it's not a romance. And I also am not a fan of found family tropes. And this book, has all of those things. So those things really stuck out like a sore thumb to me personally and I just immediately felt disconnected to the book and I just was bothered. Like it just irks me, those those things. I get real nitpicky about certain things. I can't get over it, I don't know why. But yes, yeah, so immediately, or not immediately, but just like throughout, I was noticing these things and it was just like really bothering me. But then this book deals with a lot of gentrification, major themes of that in this because it's about the whole neighborhood, this blended family moving into one of the houses and they find out that there's a lot of other stuff going on within this neighborhood, right? And I, so I appreciate the themes of that in this, but I find that that's not something I enjoy reading about. I don't find particularly interesting. I didn't love that. Again, as a YA book, I just 
knew I really wasn't gonna fall in love with it because there's been very few YA books that I do enjoy more than average. A lot of the YA books I read are either average or below average. It's hard to find one that exceeds certain expectations for a YA. So yeah, ob objectively I could see how this is a great book for some. It just fell flat for me. I found some of it to be pretty predictable and just straight up annoying. Why it can be so annoying for me and why it was so annoying for me in this one is because I just don't care to read about a moody, angsty teenage main character. Marigold, Mari, is addicted to weed and this whole book kind of feels like it's trying to normalize the use of weed recreationally, which up front I have no problem with necessarily, but this was the first time that I've ever read something that talks about weed so heavily that did seem like one of the main points in the book so that's why i feel this way i guess also i did not understand the character development between marigold and her stepsister piper it didn't seem authentic and i was just like this is literally just for them to wrap up the story in a nice way. Also, couldn't get down with all the bed bug talk and all of the times that we had to hear Reverend Scott Clark on the TV go on and on about his holy seeds. In the end, it just felt very, very unnecessary. And like I said, I hate repetition like that. Did all of my marshmallows melt already? What the heck? My marshmallows are gone. I need more. That's really sad. Okay, anyway, let me wrap this up really quick. I'm talking for too long. It's also really hard to just stay connected with the plot and storyline when I could care less about the characters. I was just not rooting for anyone, so that disconnected me from the plot itself, and so it wasn't as scary or as thrilling as it could have been for me. And again, it's YA, so I'm not surprised that I wasn't blown away by it. With all of that being said, I think I'm gonna give it three stars. I'm very middle ground here. I didn't love it, didn't hate it. Lots of things that were like immediately jumping out to me that normally I don't analyze so much in books, but this time there were lots of things where I was like really thinking about it where I was like I don't know if this is something I like to read about. This was my first Tiffany D. Jackson by the way and so this is kind of an author taste test for her. I've really really been wanting to read Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. I've heard great things and I feel like I have really high expectations or not expectations but like high hopes that that's gonna be a great book. I feel like I've heard so many great things so I really can't wait to read that one but I just hope it doesn't let me down because that's YA too right? I just don't know what to go into that thinking. But yes, so now I'm gonna move on to another new author, which is Mona Awad. And I have Bunny right here with me. And then I also have All's Well on my iPad. And I don't know which one I wanna read first. Bunny was published first, so I feel like maybe I should read that first. But for some reason, All's Well is kind of calling to me. So I don't know. First order of business is to get more marshmallows. I guess I'll read... I mean, this one's shorter. I feel like I'm just not wanting to read anything physically, physically. Should I read them in publication order? Maybe I'll put a poll on Instagram. After 20 minutes of the poll, Bunny is winning. So far, 13 to 3. So we're gonna go with Bunny. Let's get started. Oh, by the way, this is a gift from Dolores. She got this for me for... My birthday. So thank you so much, Dolores. If you're watching this, I'm going to read it now. We talked about Buddy reading it, but it just didn't end up working for each of our time frames. I'm gonna get started, and I'm really excited. Okay, so I actually have another package now to open for you guys. This is a budget planner that the company Clever Fox so kindly sent my way. And let me take this off sent me one of their planners and I chose the budget planner because for next year 2022 I really want to start budgeting. I've literally never budgeted before in my life but it's obviously an important thing to do so I saw that they had one of these planners. They also have you know like a gratitude one or a basic like bullet journal one that you could use for a reading journal. Benji. Stop. Or they have like a wellness one and like a bunch of different types. Benji, please stop. They have a bunch of different types of planners, but I got the budget one in this super pretty mint green. And so yeah, the company's called Clever Fox. They are doing a giveaway currently. So if you're interested in their planners that they have, you can go follow them on Instagram. 
Where's my phone? I swear, I'm always losing my phone. I was gonna look at it to double check their Instagram handle, but I'm pretty sure it's just like Clever Fox Planner or something like that. I don't know, I'll have it on the screen. But if you go follow them and tell them that I sent you, you can enter their giveaway. I also have a 10% off discount code. So if you wanted to get yourself a planner, then you can use my code SYDNEY10 for 10% off. They also sent me, oh, this is a little key of like what each page is and like what you can fill it out with. They also sent some really cute stickers to use in the planner. But yeah, like I said, they have all different kinds of planners. So if you wanna check them out, I will have their website and everything linked down below. And then if you wanna enter their giveaway, make sure to head over to their Instagram and tell them that I sent you. And then also Sydney 10 for 10% off if you wanna get your own planner. Super fun, super exciting. Thank you again to Clever Fox for sending me this planner. I'm really enjoying this and I'm very surprised that I am because it's very weird, it's very strange and people say like you either love it or hate it because it's so different than any other book that I've ever read. Like this is so out of left field. I'm on page 73. It's not very difficult to read at all but there have been times where I have to like slow down my reading or reread a couple things because it's so intricate. Very out there like some of the things that are in this book and I'm like did I read that correctly? It's not like so absurd in like an annoying confusing way. I feel like she accomplished exactly what she was going for with this book. I am not going to recommend this to everyone because it's so weird. There's been a little bit of like a sprinkle of horror. It's obviously not like scary or at least not yet like I'm not terrified. Okay page 93 and I'm horrified now. The craziest things happened in the book. Literally, what the heck just happened? Okay, yeah, so I take it back. This is horror now. Just like 20 pages ago where I was at, I was like, okay, it's not really like horror yet. I'm not like scared or anything. Nothing, nothing crazy is happening. But something crazy just freaking happened. So I don't know what's going on, but I like it. <laughs> I feel like this book is a fever dream. <laughs> I I don't even know how else to describe it. Like I said, I'm on page 73 and I'm hoping to finish it today because I need to move on to All's Well. Today's Friday and I need to get All's Well finished by tomorrow around like 1 p.m. because there's a live show discussion for it. Literally, I just like bracketed this whole scene and put, wow, I love the weirdness. This is the epitome of a fiction novel. I don't wanna read books that I feel like I've read a million times before. With this, I was reading it and there was nothing original being done, I felt like, for me. And it wasn't stretching my mind. It was just for entertainment, you know? It was just very okay. Like there was nothing special about this, but there's something extremely special about this book. And not just like in a quirky way. I feel like this is genuinely, authentically different and unique. And I love how it's doing something with my brain. Like, I don't know what it is doing, but in the best way. It's so imaginative and pushing boundaries a little bit, but it's just so exciting. I love the way that it's making me think about these characters and the way they live their life but also the way Mona Awad is writing it to make me feel connected to it even though it's so outlandish I feel connected to parts of it where I'm like seeing myself also viewing the world that way I really appreciate it when books do that when they just talk about life in such a raw way I don't know. I'm just really, really loving it. For those of you who don't know what this is about, I will give you a little snippet. It says, a, scholar, a scholarship student who prefer, okay, maybe not. A scholarship student who prefers the company of her dark imagination to that of most people, Samantha Heather Mackey is utterly repelled by the rest of her graduate fiction writing cohort at New England's elite Warren University. A click of unbearably saccharine how you pronounce that? Yet sinister rich girls who call each other bunny and seem to move and speak as one. But everything changes when Samantha receives an invitation to the bunny's fabled smut salon and finds herself drawn to their front door, ditching her only friend Ava in the process. As Samantha plunges deeper and deeper into the bunny's world and begins to take part in their monstrous experiments, edges of reality begin to blur. Soon her friendships with Ava and the bunnies will be brought into deadly collision. I wanna say it's kinda like 
Mean Girls. I've heard people compare it to Heathers. I really do love Samantha, the main character though too, so that's helpful. I'm really excited to finish reading it. The other thing I was gonna show you, my book of the month box came, my regular one that is not sponsored. I wanted to order this month, but I obviously couldn't get like one of their December picks because they already sent me all five of those. So I picked a member fave and I'll show you which one I got. I completed the 2021 reading challenge. So I got my socks, book of the month socks, so cute. And then, <laughs> wow, you never got cold feet and now you never will. Congrats on completing the 2021 reading challenge, book of the month. Thanks, so there's that. And then it looks like some stickers. I'll show you the book in a second. Just be patient. Cute, are these stickers? Little Christmas stickers, seasons, readings. <laughs> Sending you joy, love, and of course, books. I freaking love Book of the Month, man. Anyway, so this is the book that I got, Once There Were Wolves, by Charlotte McConaughey. I'm really excited for it. I think it's magical realism. Propulsive and spellbinding. This is the unforgettable story of a woman desperate to save the creatures she loves if she isn't consumed by a wild that was once her refuge. Interesting. Yeah, so this is a 2021 release. Came out in August. And yeah, I feel like it's magical realism, but either way, I'm really excited for it. We are running a little bit behind schedule today. I had a lot that I wanted to accomplish. I've done a good amount, but I need to hurry it up because I was hoping to have had this finished by like five. Well, I can definitely do that. I just need to focus and I need to just read for a long time. I did get a little bit distracted watching Books and Lala's new video that was like 45 minutes long. It's the one where she tries painting for 30 days and I was like oh I want to watch that so I just like dropped everything and I watched the whole thing. I just love painting videos and I love when booktubers share different hobbies that they're into and also because like that's what I'm trying to do, you know, in the new year. But I really liked how she did her video. It made me think a little bit like how I want to create content for like my art side as well. If you didn't know, I started a second channel. It's just a created channel, so there's no videos up or anything yet. But that will be kind of kickstarting in the new year and I'll have like art vlogs over there. So if you're not subscribed to that, I will link it down below. It's just called Sydney Page, etc. And so I'm really wanting to like branch out and just explore different types of video making and like what kind of content from my life I would like to share, but I don't want to bombard my booktube channel with the art also. So I've created two separate channels now for it. But like what Books and Lala did, she doesn't necessarily consider herself an artist. It's just like painting is a hobby that she's now recently discovered that she really enjoys. I would really recommend watching that video because it's super fun. I'll link that too if you want to check that out. I had a really fun time watching her and she actually made some really great pieces and I was really impressed and inspired by that video. I'm kind of waiting for the new year to dive really deep into the art making process because I'm like focused on a lot of other things right now just to finish out the year and then once January 1st hits I really want to hit the ground running with making lots of art on a daily basis and that's kind of what those videos will show yeah I don't know if you're interested in that make sure you're subscribed over there so you don't miss my first video when that comes out but the reason what I was trying to say was as opposed to how Books and Lala did it with having a video she's like calling it a new series on her channel to like try new hobbies while she listens to an audiobook so I like that way how she incorporated it to still being about books but art is never going to go away for me so like she's trying to test out different hobbies not just the painting she doesn't need to make a whole second channel because art isn't that big of a priority in her life is what I kind of gathered from that video but who knows like maybe maybe in the future I don't know I'm just saying like I don't see books and Lala making a whole nother art channel so like that's why I want to separate the two because I know books aren't gonna go away from me and art is not gonna go away from me but I don't feel like it's gonna make sense to mash them together on the same channel if you're just here for the books or you just want to be there for the art whatever yeah that is that so I got really distracted watching her video and then I did this makeup look 
for the thumbnail. The only other like main thing I need to do today is go to the pharmacy and pick up a prescription, which actually is an iron supplement. If you watched that one video where I talked about my health issues that I was going through, I went to the doctor and did blood work and they found out that I'm iron deficient. So I'm not anemic, I'm just low in iron. So I have to go pick up my prescription for an iron supplement. So there's the little update on that. There's not really much else I have to update you on, except for I'm scheduled for a home sleep study test thing which will be in like a couple weeks so that'll be interesting I have to go pick up all the equipment and like attach it to myself to sleep with that night and then take it back to them the next day and they'll be able to see how I sleep and if there's any like disruptions or you know whatever that means if something's affecting the reason why I'm so tired all the time hopefully maybe that'll tell them something I don't know but yeah those are the health updates as far as book updates I'm on chapter 16 page 135 and i'm still really loving it guys i am so blown away by how much i'm enjoying this it's just like i don't even know okay i'm gonna see if i can articulate with actual words this time i feel like this book is leaving me kind of speechless but when i'm in when i'm like ow just hit my elbow as I'm physically in the world, in the story, I feel like I have so many thoughts and then as soon as I put it down, my brain just like turns off. It like goes numb and I'm like, how do I even explain this to a person? So far, um, just like literally just under halfway, I'm loving it. I think it might be a five star. There's still a lot to unpack and see how it goes, but I feel like it's going to be great. So yeah, I'm excited to keep reading, but I want to point out on one of these pages here, on page 106, there's a scene where they're talking about Samantha's piece that she wrote. Because this is like set in a university, it's dark academia, they always talk about things that they write for their writing class. They're all kind of critiquing something that she wrote and they're using words like innovative, experimental, performance-based, intertextual, basically a hybrid and just this whole scene where they say the most obscure of academic beasts what you call something when you just don't know what you're doing anymore a hybrid so combining genres and they go tisk tisk Samantha we're at Warren the most experimental groundbreaking writing school in the country this goes way beyond genre it subverts the whole concept of genre and gender narratives and the patriarchy of language and I just highlighted or underlined all of that like just this whole scene and I said basically describes this book like that's how I would describe Bunny as a whole. <laughs> it's experimental, innovative, a hybrid, groundbreaking, goes way beyond genre, subverts the whole concept of genre, performs in all its nuanced viscerality. Like, I don't know. This, this book is so amazing. Control over your art, over your life, all aspects of your life, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. It's just so... groundbreaking mind-blowing for me this experience with this book i'm loving it if you love this book we are automatically best friends because i love the level that this book is on it's on a whole different level and i love it i made a list i was talking to riley about like how do i describe this book like i'm trying to think of adjectives i don't know how to describe the entire book yet i feel like it's just beyond my mental capacity like what word to use if you've read this book and you're good with vocab, comment down below how you would describe this book because I really am trying to wrap my brain around it still. I think more for the characters in here, I think that is what I would describe as vulgar, crude, oh let me go back to my list, explicit, obscene, body, smutty, profane, raunchy, and then I guess like the narrative, I would say suggestive and risque. I don't know if those are accurate words but you guys can comment down below and let me know what you think if you agree or how you would describe bunny because it's so different and so unique but it's so good like in the best way i'm really really loving it i can't believe how much i'm obsessing over it like i'm actually obsessed with this book which is so cool i think my problem with like finishing it right now is because when i'm loving a book so much i will pause and like just reflect on the entire thing i just read i will go back and reread so i've been doing that with this book and i'm just like trying to dissect it all because there's so much juice in here it's so full of crazy stuff Sorry, I'm just thinking out loud here. Because at 5 p.m. I want to watch 
Frozen 2 with the Citadel, which is Mel Reed's Patreon. We are having a watch party for Frozen 2 and I've never seen that before. So I want to watch it with them and that's at 5, so in an hour. So I'll read as much as I can up until then, but I also need to go get my prescription. I'll just talk to you once I have another update. Oh my gosh, literally the next page that I read, they reference Frozen. What are the odds of that? time to take off all this makeup and I'm getting so tired. I managed to finish Bunny. We actually weren't starting with Frozen 2 for the readathon. They switched it to one of the other movies we were gonna watch so that for the people who haven't seen the first Frozen, they'll have some time to watch that before we watch the sequel. So I didn't end up watching a movie at five or anything. I just went and got my prescription and then I got back to reading this and finished it a little while ago and I've just been trying to process like I feel like my brain is malfunctioning it's empty it's hurting but I can't think of anything to hate about this book like I don't have any problems with it I really really surprisingly loved it so I think I'm gonna give it five stars seriously the writing in here was so mesmerizing amazing like I loved it it was my favorite part about this whole thing yeah I really have no words I have no extra thoughts to add so hopefully what I've already said up until this point is enough and hopefully it makes sense I feel brain dead but I know that I loved it my experience with it was great I love Mona Awad's writing style so I'm going to be moving on to all's well now not quite sure how that one's gonna go in comparison or in general i will see you guys in my next vlog which will be my weekend reading vlog and you can hear my thoughts and see the process of me reading that book in that vlog so that is going to be it for this one thank you guys so much for watching okay hi update that wasn't the end of the vlog but now this is the end of the vlog <laughs> because i'm not doing a weekend reading vlog anymore because this weekend is already chalked like it's saturday and it's like already almost 2 p.m haven't even filmed the intro for it and i'm just like not feeling good i slept for way too long last night i'm just like super super tired and woke up with kind of a headache and all these things and i'm just like you know what maybe that's not a good idea so we're just keeping it as the weekly vlog. I was gonna do the weekend for like the readathon because I was gonna read All's Well and maybe something else. But I think that's too much pressure because this weekend I actually really need to do some filming and editing and things like that. And then with All's Well, I was trying to finish it in time for the live show with Olivia Reads a Latte and Mel Reads. That was at one, that was at 45 minutes ago, and I didn't finish it in time because I slept so much and I couldn't wake up to finish it. So I just hopped on the live show and like heard all their thoughts and they kind of told me enough to know that I don't need to finish it because what I had already read, I had started it last night and I read the first like five or six chapters and you know, it was okay. I still really love Mona Awad's writing and I appreciated her narrative and the way she writes is very beautiful to me. I also liked the chronic illness chronic pain representation. And then also I, I was thinking how it was very ironic that I couldn't wake up to finish the book because I have chronic fatigue <laughs> because I was so tired and I couldn't wake up to finish the book so I was on the live show and I heard enough to know that I can just DNF it because I'm also not a huge fan of theater like it just doesn't interest me that much I would have seen the story through if what they said in the live show kept me interested but it sounds like there's not a big overarching plot or resolve I mean like nothing really happens in the book and there's not so much of like a climax that you're like waiting to get to is what they were saying so I'm like okay that's fine I'm just gonna put it down I'm gonna put my time into something else so that's what I'm going to do yes so that is now still the end of the vlog here but I wanted to let you know there's not gonna be a weekend vlog but there's lots of videos coming up because I have to film a lot of videos and edit and upload and all that good stuff so thank you guys so much for watching all the way up until this point I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next video very soon bye <laughs>